What's in a name? Everything. We want labels on our cars, our clothes. We want labels on our labels. Even prestige brands like Mercedes and BMW have their tuning concerns. AMG and Alpina. For those who want their wheels that little bit harder, faster and a tad more exclusive. And further down the line, Fiat has our bath. Our bath mean anything to you? Perhaps not, but if I told you that our bath is to Fiat what Cooper is to Mini, then you'll get some idea. Carlo Arbath raced motorbikes in the 20s and 30s. After the war, he set about developing four-wheeled racers. Arbath was a large factory in Turin, and uh, it had a, a network of dealerships all over Europe. And you could go in and literally buy a sticker, or you could buy a crankshaft, or you could buy a complete car. Look at the cars winning on Sunday and go down to the shop on Monday and buy the bits to make your car. Uh, maybe even not quite so fast, but at least some, some, some of the essence of it. The classic are bath racing saloons with Fiat's on steroids. Wheels bulging from the arches, boot lid propped open for cooling and downforce. Bonsai engines screaming away, they won hundreds of races all over Europe. When Fiat launched the 600 in 1955, a bath immediately set about making it faster. Engines grew to 750, then 850, and finally to this 1,000cc screamer. A bath took the 600 and built a new car. Of course, you didn't have to buy the lot. You could buy a Fiat and upgrade the brakes, engine, suspension, exhaust. By today's standards, this our bath's 75 brake horsepower engine may not seem a lot for a sporty motor. But when you whack it into the back of a 585 kilogram car, it's more than enough. Brisk acceleration is accompanied by a roughy tone. And a happy driver because this thing is so much fun. It may not have power assisted steering, anti lock brakes, or even a fifth gear, but it's all the better for it. The change has a wonderful mechanical rifle bolt feel and sound to it, and the pedals are light to use, with a tantalising glimpse of the road beneath. You drive this car with your hands, your feet and your bum. Michael Schumacher has got a baby Fiat, and it's not difficult to see why. I am not a big fan of old cars, but I love this one. Carlo Arbath sold out to Fiat in 1971, and 30 years later, Fiat have sold out his good name with this. The Punto HGT Arbath. At £13,300, it costs a grand more than the standard hot Punto, the HGT. But hey, you get a bath kick plates, a bath styled spoilers, and side skirts, and new wheels outside and in. But the key word here is branding. This is an above and badge only. The HGT's engine, gearbox and suspension are carried over wholesale. Don't think Carlo would approve. But he might enjoy driving it. This Punto may not be as fluid as a Peugeot 206 GTI, but the 1.8 litre 16 valve engine will get you to 62 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds and on to 127, but you have to thrash the nuts off it to get there. The ride is on the firm side of rock hard, so you're left bouncing from corner to corner. The chassis is pretty decent though, and the tyres grip well, but the steering is at best semi-detached. Sports seats ensure a snug fit, and it's got all the usual Pinto virtues of a spacious interior and loads of storage room. But horror of horrors, there's no cuppy. In European crash tests, the Punto scored a safe four stars, and it looks crisp and stylish alongside ageing opponents, the Fiesta, Saxo and Polo. But it's not worth a hundred thousand pennies more than a standard HGT. If you must have an Abarth badge on your car, make sure it's an old one. Personally, I'd spend £10,000 and buy that little puppy and spend the remaining few grand on some other designer labels. From Oxford Street, I think.